Welcome everyone, I am your host commentator, can we get 400 likes on today's video? Subscribe if you are new here and you enjoy horror stories. Let's begin. We had been in our new house on Dartmoor in Devon for about 6 weeks. We were still living out of boxes which were sped between the house, garage and the summer house at the end of the garden. Mum and Dad had decided to return to London for Friday and Saturday, and then return on Sunday. My dad's brother had been ill and just come out of hospital after an operation, so they had decided to go and stay for a couple of nights and help him out and cook for him. Mum said to me, you're a big boy now, 17 years old, she said, raising her eyes. There's lots of food in the house for you, it goes without saying, no rave parties though. We'll be back on Sunday night. You can always ring us if you have any survival questions and then she went out the door laughing. I'll be fine I said, stop fussing and get going otherwise dad will be grumpy having to wait in the car and he might go without you I smiled. With that mum gave me a hug and kiss and shot out the door. Next thing I heard was the car pulling away on the gravel drive. The house we had bought had 5 bedrooms and 3 reception rooms, and it even had a games room, plus a large attached garage and workshop, as well as a summer house at the end of the yard. My sister was abroad working and had not even seen the house yet, so all her stuff was boxed up in her room waiting, and as always she had the most stuff, her room was to the ceiling with boxes. We had a big garden laid to lawn and trees to two sides. The national park was on one side and a small cottage on the other was the only neighbour we had, who we still had not seen or met as of yet in the story. It was Friday night so I decided to throw a ready meal in the microwave, which just so happened to be lasagna. Once I pinged it I got a cold beer from the fridge and sat down in front of the TV and flipped through the channel looking for a film which was not a B-movie. Then, all of a sudden, the next thing I hear, there's a knock at the front door. Who knocks at someone's door at 9pm? You tell me. As I headed for the door, I decided to just have a quick look through the side window, to see who was at the door. When I looked out, I could not see anything because it was pitch black. It was then that I realised that I had not put the external porch light on, so I went to the left side wall and flicked the switch on. I went back to the window to take another look. As I pulled the curtain back, I saw a black shape quickly step off the porch and disappear back into the darkness of our drive. Okay, I was a bit spooked at this point. I decided to be bold and open the door. I picked up my dad's torch that was by the coat rack at the door. I stepped out onto the porch trying to make myself look bigger than my slight 5 foot 10 frame. I shone the torch around left and right, but there was nothing. Yes, can I help you? What do you want? I said, in as deep a voice as possible, which didn't even convince me, let alone any stranger knocking on your door in the night. I waited and listened, but I could not hear anything or anyone. I went back inside and decided to lock the door behind me. I put it down to hopefully someone messing around, maybe someone from our cottage neighbour's house. I went back to my half eaten lasagna and beer on the couch and found a good action film to start watching. I still could not get the incident out of my head, who would do that? For what reason it just didn't make any sense, we'd only just moved in and didn't know anyone, and what neighbour would introduce themselves at almost 10 o'clock at night. I finished off my lasagna and got another beer from the fridge and carried on watching the film. The next thing I remember was waking up on the sofa and the TV now had some rubbish romance film on so I turned it off. I turned the downstairs light off and headed up to bed. I'd been asleep for around 2 hours when I was woken up by my bladder, telling me if you drink beer in the night, you're going to need to go for a pee throughout the entire night. 
In my sleepy state, I opened the bedroom door and slowly walked into the landing and through to the bathroom. I got to the bathroom on the landing and walked through the open door. Damn, this was even colder than the landing I thought. I decided not to put the light on because it would hurt my eyes, so I headed for the toilet on the far wall, trying to feel my way across the landing. How come there was a breeze blowing through the bathroom I thought? That does not make any sense. Then I looked over to the bathroom side window and I saw that it was fully open. What were mum and dad thinking leaving that wide open like that I thought to myself. As I went to close the window something caught my eye on the outside window ledge. There seemed to be two metal poles about 20 inches apart. At first my sleepy brain couldn't register what I was seeing and then suddenly everything became crystal clear. What I was looking at was the top of a ladder resting on the window ledge. Then I froze in terror. Someone must have put the ladder up against the window while I was asleep, climbed up and somehow opened it and got into the house. Maybe that was why the bathroom door was open when I came in. I sat down on the bathroom floor trying to think what to do next. A voice in my head was shouting get out of the house now. I couldn't think straight. Was there one intruder or could there be two? I was just so hungover that my brain wasn't functioning properly and still I thought maybe there's a chance this isn't even real. Had the people maybe robbed the house while I was asleep on the couch or asleep in my bed and then left? Or worse, were the intruders, still in the house, with the intention of hurting me? I had to try and think straight, I know I thought. I would try and go quietly back to my bedroom and angle a chair under the door handle. And then I planned on using my mobile phone to call the police and say that I think I had an intruder in the house. Suddenly I had a reality check. My phone was not in the bedroom. I had left it on the kitchen table when I was using the microwave earlier that evening. I had to come up with another plan and fast. And then I thought, I know, I will use the ladder against the window, climb down and then run to our neighbour in the cottage and raise the alarm and phone the police there. I stood on the basin in my bare feet, then grabbed hold of the window frame with both hands and turned round as slowly as I could. I started to put one foot after another on the runs of the ladder and then brought my hands down to hold this ladder. I slowly but surely started down the ladder. I had only gone down about four steps when I looked down and saw a dark figure suddenly appear at the bottom of the ladder. Then the figure started climbing up towards me. I stopped and quickly started climbing back up when I reached the window. I climbed inside as quickly as possible and took one more quick look down the ladder. To my amazement the dark figure was no longer climbing the ladder and was nowhere to be seen. I closed the bathroom window and locked the handle. I went to the bathroom door and looked out onto the landing and tried to listen as carefully as possible to see if I could hear someone moving around downstairs. I quietly moved across the landing to my bedroom. I then carefully angled my chair against the door handle on the inside to hopefully keep anyone out. Then I sat down on my bed trying to think what I could do. Eventually after some thought and panicking I suddenly realised that I was hearing loud thuds. Again my mind wasn't processing things. It was all so slow, during hangovers I was dreadful. The thuds were getting louder and they seemed to be coming from against my bedroom door, which shook me. Then I could hear breathing the other side of the door, then total silence. I held my breath and then another huge bang against my door. This time there was the sound of breaking wood. I had to get out but how? That door was not going to hold much longer, there was someone in this house and now they were trying to break down my bedroom door. 
I realized in the corner of my bedroom ceiling was a loft hatch. I frantically looked around for the hook pole to pull down the loft hatch and the ladder. This house was still new to me and I hadn't explored the whole place. I found the hook pole quickly and pulled it down. I shot up the ladder and flicked on the light switch to the loft. This loft was large and full of more storage items. I looked around, how was I going to escape this nightmare? Then I saw it. There was a skylight and underneath it was a fire escape rope ladder strapped up. That was it. I quickly went over, unlatched the window and opened it wide. I then unstrapped the rope ladder and put it out the window. All the while, the thudding and smashing noises of breaking wood were becoming louder and more intense from downstairs. I climbed up on some of the boxes and carefully started climbing down the rope ladder. Then I heard a loud crash which sounded like my bedroom door being smashed in. I was not hanging about now. I shot down the ladder and I jumped the last 8 feet to the lawn. As I landed I felt my ankle go over and a shooting pain ran up my leg. I stood up trying to take the weight on the other leg but it was so painful. I started limping over the lawn. The yard was now completely lit up by security lights. That had picked up my movement. I was headed to the neighbor's cottage when the house back door flew open and a dark figure came running out after me. As he entered the light field over the lawn, I could see he was wearing some form of long green coat with a large hood which was obscuring his face and he was holding some form of weapon in his right hand. Never in my life have I actually feared for my own safety, not to this degree, and I have to say that the feeling of helplessness is a feeling that I am yet to feel in my life ever again. As I stood there trying to literally run for my life limping across my yard to my neighbor's cottage, I shouted out for help at the top of my voice. I knew that I could not outrun this guy with my ankle injury. Suddenly there was a very loud bang of a gun going off in front of me. There I saw a man standing at the bottom of the neighbor's garden with a smoking shotgun at his shoulder. I looked behind to see the dark figure swerve off to the left and keep running down the drive and disappear into darkness. The neighbor had seen and heard the noises over the fence. He had phoned the police and until they arrived had decided he would try and help, thankfully for me just at the perfect time. The police came and carried out forensics of the property. They got prints and some DNA blood samples where he smashed a bedroom door in cutting himself in the process. None of his profiles matched any of the police database and more worryingly 6 months to date they have not caught any suspect. Mum and dad were so relieved that I was safe and said they are never going to leave me alone again. They have since gone out and bought two German Shepherd dogs for security of the property and even had them trained by security professionals. I am absolutely petrified to ever be left home alone ever again. I was 17, I had the choice of running away, the option of getting safety and a godsend of a neighbour who I am now best friends with to this day. Had this have all panned out differently, I don't know what would have been happening. I don't know that I'd probably be not here to write this story. I was 15. I was laying in my bed, all alone. The house was empty. My parents had gone out on a date night and locked the door behind them. They told me that I could stay up and do whatever I wanted, I just wasn't allowed to leave the house. To me that's all they cared about, I could stay up all the way until they got home at around 1 or 2 in the morning, as long as I didn't leave the house. They locked the door behind me and stressed that I was to answer the door to no one and if someone was to ring I was to go upstairs and ignore it. This was actually my third time being left home alone and it wasn't an issue for me. I didn't mind it, it didn't play on my mind and I didn't worry. Let's rewind to the beginning of the story. So, I was lying on my back. I had just eaten some dinner, my mum had already made me. 
It was preheated and then I just ate it on my own, watching some TV in the living room. When I'd finished, I was told to leave a couple lights on downstairs so that when they got home they could see where they were coming in. My parents left at around 9 o'clock, maybe around 8.30. I went over to the heater and grabbed my food off of the hob. My mum had left it on a low heat and just allowed it to warm up over the next couple of minutes. She told me not to forget and said that it would be done the next 10 minutes after they left. I went over and poured it all out into a dish. It was just some weird recipe of a bunch of rice and sauce. I wouldn't call it curry. I guess you could call it some kind of kedgeri maybe? This was a dish that my mum used to make and it's eggs and tuna and fish and rice and some vegetables. It's not awful but at the same time it's not my favourite. I poured it out into a bowl and took it over into the living room. I put on some TV and just began eating it. As I took my first couple of bites, I realised that this was still not warm enough. It seemed too cold as if it wasn't heated through. So I got back up and took my dish over to the hob again, pouring the remains of the kedgeri into the saucepan. Then I turned the hob back on and heated it up thoroughly until I could hear the rice crackling on the outer layer of the pan. That did the job. I poured it back into the dish and swirled it around with my spoon, spreading it out evenly, making it a little full and appetizing. Then I come back over to the living room, sit down and finish dinner. After I was done, I played a bunch of games on my Xbox and then head up to bed. Just like they said, I left all of the lights on. I went up and got myself ready for bed. I brushed my teeth, got changed and went to the toilet. Same old routine, just two hours later this time, at midnight. This brings me back to the beginning of the story. I was laying in my bed on my back as I've said before. I was twiddling my thumbs, wondering why I couldn't get to sleep. Something just didn't feel right. Usually I was a fast sleeper and could just nod off instantly, especially if I'd had a long day. This was a Friday, one of my most stressful days. I'd had band camp, rehearsal and a whole bunch of other essays to revise for. Even after all this, I still couldn't seem to sleep. I just put it down to my parents being out and I guess my subconscious, maybe it just felt a bit uneasy or a bit confused why my parents weren't there and why all the lights were on downstairs. I like to sleep with the door propped open. I've just done that since I was two years old, well, as far back as I can remember actually. It was something my parents always did when they put me to bed, they would leave the door open or ajar slightly. At 15 I still did that, I eventually grew out of it at 18. But this night, it was just so lucky that I kept it open. You see as I lay there twiddling my thumbs, wondering in my mind why oh why can't I get to sleep, I began to smell a rather unusual smell. My room smells rather neutral. From time to time, my mum will use air fresheners or even come in and clean the sheets, using the chemicals. This smell would come around and linger for a couple days and then dissipate, but this smell was nothing like a cleaning chemical smell. This smell instead smelled like burning. It smelled as if someone had had a barbecue, but they weren't burning meat, they were burning wood or some kind of plastic. It was a real nasty type of smell. I tried to ignore it as much as I could, and eventually I turned over to my left hand side and started to doze off. Without realising that the smell was now getting stronger and stronger as I began to breathe in all the fumes through my nostrils. A few more minutes passed, or what felt like a few more minutes, I began to get drowsy and started dozing off. I was entering into my first few dreams when out of nowhere, I was woken abruptly in a complete shock. The smoke alarm on the landing outside was screeching like crazy. It was so loud that it was hurting my ears. The next thing I know, I turn around onto my right hand side and there are clouds of smoke entering my bedroom through where the door was propped open. Instantly, I take a huge gasp of air in 
almost intoxicating myself with fumes and making myself lightheaded. The combination of panic and also feeling dizzy from all the fumes took its toll on my body. I started having to control myself as the room began to spin and it felt like the walls around me were rotating as if I was on some kind of a roller coaster at a play park. Eventually, I step on out of bed with the walls still moving. I'm holding onto them, screaming for dear life. I thought this better be some kind of a nightmare. I had lucid dreamed before and had a history of bad nightmares, and I always had one technique to deal with it. That was, I would look at my hands. If my hands looked funny, I knew it was a dream or a nightmare. When I looked at my hands, they looked real. They were there and then I started hitting my face. I knew this was real. I was just taking a toll. My body was from whatever I was breathing in. I felt lightheaded and dizzy. Now I had to get the hell out of this house. I pull open the door further, making it all the way open. Then I'm met by a roaring sound of flames from downstairs. There was smoke engulfing everywhere I could barely see properly. At this point, I genuinely felt so terrified that I thought I was going to die then and there. Quickly, I grab one of my t-shirts from my drawer, wrap it round my mouth, and then proceed to run through the landing upstairs. I run down the stairs, tripping as I'm halfway down, falling onto my shoulder. The pain from my shoulder, and now the dizziness from the fumes, was starting to really control my consciousness. I felt like I wasn't in control of my body or the situation at hand. The panic had now eased off as I began to come unconscious and start to sway from side to side while trying to get back up from falling down. I turned to my right and I was met with the demon causing all of this. There was a huge fire on top of the stove, the gas stove. This ladies and gentlemen was a fire that I had caused by leaving the hob turned on, I forgot to turn it off when I reheated the kedri in the dish. Now I ran straight to the front door and tried to try the handle. That's when I realized my parents had locked me in. Reality finally sunk in as I began banging the door and slapping at the window. By this point I felt like I was in a dream, as becoming so dizzy and hallucinating so bad that I was beginning to actually see my life flash in front of me. At these moments, I thought of giving up, just laying down and forgetting about it all. I felt like I could have just gone to sleep and surrendered then and there. Something within me spoke down to me. They said my name. They told me to get up and ordered me back up the stairs and into my bedroom. Then it clicked. I crawled back up the stairs trying to maintain consciousness, although that in itself was difficult. When I made it back upstairs, I realized that the only way I could get out of this house was from the top floor, the windows my parents hadn't locked. The stupid thing was that they hadn't told me where the spare key was, I didn't know. The spare key was usually kept in my dad's room or somewhere on his key rings which he always wore to work or anywhere when he left the house. I stood there back upstairs and slammed my door shut. I did what we had been told to do when they trained us in high school of house fire events. I put my duvet and my pillows in the gaps of the door, trying to stop any of the carbon dioxide and fumes from leaking in through the door. Then I took off my t-shirt which was smothered in smoke and absolutely stunk. My eyes were stinging. Then I went over to my window and busted open as far as I possibly could. It was just big enough for me to fit out and at the time I was small, maybe 5 foot 4. I managed to squeeze my whole body out of this window. The next part is really hard to explain but we have one of those houses where the top window is above one of the ledges that sinks downward with tiles on top. Yes, this was a lifesaver because now I was standing on the tiles and although dangerous, it meant I only had to jump around 10 to 15 feet down. I know that this was probably ankle breaking or even leg breaking height, 
but I would rather that than die from intoxication of breathing fumes. From this point, I tried my best to jump, but in a way that would require least injury possible. There was a bush just to the left of the ledge, I know. This was going to be painful, but it was to save my life. You see, the whole house at this point was practically in flames, and the flames were starting to eat away now at the top level of the house. I had no choice really, no fire brigade had been called, and where we lived our neighbours were a good 2 to 300 metres away, and they were around 80 years old, couldn't hear or see particularly well for who they were. I didn't rely on them calling an ambulance, heck I didn't even grab a phone while I was in the house. It was now or never, I leaped into the bush and landed face first into prickles and thorns. I cut my body up real bad, but I lived to tell the tale. Eventually, I ran to my neighbours, they were fast asleep. Jill, the old lady who's 87 years old, answered the door. I was panicking and she looked so distraught and worried when she saw me in the state. I had no time to explain, but I told her I needed to use the phone. There was a fire in our house and that we needed to get the fire responders there ASAP. Eventually, I called 911 and that happened. I was cut, bruised and bleeding just about everywhere, where the thorns and prickles had entered my body, piercing through in around 50 different places. It was a miracle that I somehow healed from all that and didn't get an infection. The firefighters arrived around 3 minutes later, real fast. We didn't live far from their station. They bust down the door, smashing it through, and a team of around 7 guys went in and blast everything with high powered water. While this was all going on, I sat outside in the ambulance with the medics seeing to my wounds. Later that evening, I had to be taken into hospital for them to run some more checks on me. I was badly bruised up, I had a sprained rib, and even worse, I'd busted my shoulder up from falling down the stairs on my first attempt of getting out the door. Not to mention the 50 cuts and punches I had all over my body. That was pain, but more pain was my parents coming home, seeing what had happened to their house, their family home of 35 years. It was destroyed, totally black, to a crisp. The whole thing had been burnt, along with all the possessions inside. All because I left the Hobon. I'm now 21 years old at the time of writing this story, so years have passed. Even to this day we don't really talk about what happened that night. I know deep down they blame me for it, but they were kind enough and understanding enough to see through the situation. They could have lost the house and their son. I have a good relationship with my parents and always have done, but I know they're upset because there were some really sentimental valuables in that house that got destroyed and burnt down with the fire. I'm not clumsy and I was never known for being clumsy, but the one time I was, it cost my entire family the whole house. I regret this, and every night before I go to sleep, I have some subconscious anxiety about what happened happening again, and also the guilt of what I did to them. My roommate, who I lived with, was celebrating her friend's wedding celebration. I was home alone and our apartment was fairly small. It was a two bedroom and we had a living space attached to a kitchen. So the kitchen situated just opposite, the seats and the TV. Our windows were overlooking the small gardens and the apartment parking lot. This evening I was to be left alone until 3am, or so she claimed. Her goal was to get back in an Uber because she was most likely going to drink and get pretty drunk. She had known her friends since high school and as a result they were a bit crazy and got on real well. I'd never met her friends so I wasn't invited and I wasn't even close to the family. I didn't know the groom either or his side of the family so I figured I'd just have a nice evening in alone by myself. I put on Netflix to check out what was on, and I decided that I would now just scroll through trying to find a series that I would watch. I got pretty hooked on different series for whatever reason, 
There's something addictive about the site Netflix, and I have to say, I don't think I'll ever go without it for the rest of my life. Even if I become so busy, I think I'll always try and find time. I was scrolling through Netflix trying to look for a series, the next thing I know I hear a knock at the door. Now it was around 10 o'clock, so I thought to myself, damn, she's back early. After I checked my phone to see what time it was, I became even more confused, because the next thing my brain thought of was, wait, Elsa took a key with her, why would she knock on the door? Well, I didn't know, but I thought to myself maybe she was that drunk that she had just forgotten her key, but she was back five hours earlier than she had said she would be, ten o'clock. I mean, I'm not a serious party goer, but that's damn early, even for a wedding celebration. So, I get up, put my drink down, and quickly stop shuffling through the Netflix choices. As I walk over, I take a listen for a couple seconds. I call out, Elsa, is that you? No one answers. This spooked me out even more, because I didn't know who was on the other side of the door. We didn't have a peephole, and that's real, real bad, especially in situations like this. I walk over and pull the chain across, just in case, and to be sure. I unlock the door, twist the handle, and then prop it against the chain so its maximum open length is pulling the chain tight. When I peek through, I see our next door neighbour, Alan. He's a guy in his thirties, around 6'1", he has dark hair and quite attractive. He's a friendly dude, but we don't really talk to him much. He stood there awkwardly, quietly, and a few seconds just glided by. Then, he looks at me and says, I notice Elsa's gone out. Her car's not in the parking lot. Where is she? I'd never spoken to this guy, ever. I'd only winked at him or just smiled a couple of times, you know, like the usual head nod, but he had spoken to Elsa a few times, as Elsa had been there longer than me, around two years before I got there. She used to have a different housemate, but apparently this dude had always lived opposite. This neighbour was new to me. I didn't know him, and although I'd seen him a few times, I didn't like the vibe he was now giving me, stood on the other side of this door at 10pm. He was trying to talk me into letting him in, you see, that's what I got the vibe he was doing. He wanted me to unhook the chain. It was all too uncomfortable as he started trying to talk about Elsa, he was inquiring where she went and why she had gone. Asking was I all alone in the apartment and did I want company? At this point, the guy was really confusing me, cause I'll be honest, he's kind of hot, but he was creeping me out. You see, this guy now took a step closer, and the gap between me, him, and the propped open door by the chain was maybe a few inches at most. He reached in and unhooked the chain, pushing the door gradually open. Before I could say a single word or slam the door on him, he had walked through, putting his boot in the wedge of the door so I couldn't shut it. Then, as he's gliding through as if I've just welcomed him in, he mutters, you don't mind if I come and join you, do you? I'm alone too, we could grab a drink, do you have any coffee? I went silent and just started stuttering, the words weren't coming out of my mouth properly, the guy then walked across into our kitchen and started picking out some mugs. He got two mugs out of the cupboard and shut it. Then I gained the courage. I talked to him in a soft voice, still stuttering. C can you please leave? I, I didn't say you could come in here. He turns to me and stops making the coffee. He doesn't say anything though, he just stares. He was wearing a white shirt, looked like he had work trousers on and smartish boots. He had a clean cut beard and some longish hair. He looked the part, 
but this guy wasn't getting over me with his looks. He had just broken into my apartment and was now giving me vibes of a predator. I didn't know what to do, so the next thing I do is run back into the bathroom, lock the door and grab my phone as I'm running to it. I dial Elsa's number and tell her that the guy has just walked into our apartment and is making himself coffee. He unhooked the chain by putting his fingers through the door. Elsa told me to stay in the bathroom and should be right back as soon as she could be. She said that one of her friends was going to give her a lift and bring her father back with us. So that's what I did, but that was a good 15 minutes away. A minute passes and all of a sudden I hear his footsteps approaching the door, slowly, very slowly. The footsteps stop directly outside of the bathroom door. I could see the reflection of his shadow coming in from the living room LED lights illuminating his tall figure under the door. Then I heard three knocks. He puts his head to the door, calls my name and says are you okay? Don't you want to come out? I've made us a coffee. Come on. Everything about his tone of voice was now making me scream inside. I felt like this guy was going to kill me at any moment. I'd watched far too many serial killer documentaries and movies, and this guy fit the bill to a T. I stayed in the bathroom and ignored everything he said. I understand if you're reading this right now, you're probably screaming at the computer, thinking why didn't I call the police ASAP. I have to be honest, it didn't even cross my mind. That sounds so stupid me saying that now, but for some reason this guy was giving me different vibes. I could tell he was creeping me out, but he was so overly confident that at the same time, I didn't think about calling the police. His charm was all too great, but I was scared of him at the same time. I stayed in the bathroom with the door locked for another five minutes. I heard him rattling some spoons about and opening some more drawers. Then, all of a sudden, I can hear Elsa's voice out in the living room. She was shouting at him, telling him to get the hell out of the property. I open the door and hear a bunch of arguing going on. Next thing I know, she's trying to grab him and pull him out the door. She actually gets him out of the property and the apartment and ends up kicking him out into his own apartment. She then slams the door behind him, putting the chain back across and the deadbolts at the bottom. She turned to me and explained that he does this to all the new girls. He helps himself in and welcomes himself to making drinks and food for them. Apparently he tried it with her the first time she moved in. I don't know what was wrong with this situation. How it was just acceptable because of how good looking and tall he was, or how he felt he could simply just break in to a girl who was alone at night in an apartment and make himself coffee as if he had forced himself into a date that the girl didn't even want to be a part of. I don't know what his intentions were, truly, but I can only guess. I think me and most of the people reading this know what they were, but to me he gave serious serial killer vibes. I wasn't going to drink that coffee. Heck, I wasn't going to leave the bathroom until Elsa got home. I never talked to that guy ever again, and although I make eye contact with him occasionally if we pass or cross paths in the parking lot, I try my best to avoid it. I don't care how good looking he is or how charming, that was outright not allowed, and if anything we should have called the police that night. Elsa brushed it off and just said it's just something he does, as if she accepts it, but something just didn't sit right with me. That shouldn't be allowed and I guess I wanted to share that with you guys as my Home Alone horror story.